Ahead on the MTN 430 News here on Q2, all out of luck. The Montana Millionaire Lottery sells all 500,000 tickets this morning in record-breaking time. Plus, a Montana murder. You're charged with 455-102 delivered homicide. A suspect appears in court after confessing to a brutal murder near Big Sky that caught national headlines. And the final stretch. <laughs> Montana politicians travel far and wide the next few days, hoping to make some final moves before Election Day Tuesday. The MTN 430 News on Q2 starts right now. Good afternoon and thank you for joining us on this Friday. I'm Charlie Kleps. With Election Day now just four days away, candidates are traveling all across the state, getting some final moments of campaigning in before the big day. Today, many of the big name Democrats were here in Billings at the pub station. Senator John Tester and Montana Governor candidate Ryan Bussey were in attendance with each candidate addressing the crowd. Majority of the message at this point is just to get out and vote. Governor hopeful Ryan Bussey says if he's elected, he would provide a big difference in Montana compared to current Governor Greg Gianforte. Well, what has surprised me is how bad affordability is hitting the folks in the state, how bad the property tax thing really is. People are, they're in, they're in a bad way because of it. It doesn't have to happen. We had a $2.6 billion surplus and still he raised people's taxes. That's wrong and it, it surprised me really how bad that folks are hurting. It's, it's, it's a bad spot. The stop in Billings was the first of many that the group will make over the next few days. They stopped in Livingston later today and will wrap up their Friday in Bozeman on Montana State's campus. Governor Greg Gianforte is also making the rounds across the state in the campaign's final days. Earlier this week, Gianforte visited Columbus to honor two high schoolers who played a big role in saving their friend's life. Gianforte recognized Grayson Williams and Chancey Sagberg after their heroic efforts to help a friend after a car accident in July of 2022. The ceremony was held at the Columbus Fire Hall, where dozens of community members, firefighters, and law enforcement officers were presented as Gianforte awarded the young men with a certificate and flag. Gianforte says the courage both boys displayed is exactly what makes residents of Montana so special. It's great to be in Columbus to honor Grayson and Chansey for their heroic efforts in saving their friend Ethan, who was uh, thrown from a vehicle. Uh, they came to his rescue, and so we honored them both with the community there, the first responders, the sheriff's office, parents and friends, uh, with the Spirit of Montana Award. And the best thing about Montana is Montanans, especially when they go above and beyond to help their neighbor. That's why we honored Grayson and Chansey in Columbus today. The boy who was rescued from the crash, Ethan, has fully recovered from it after several surgeries and is back to doing what he loves, playing basketball, football, and baseball. That race between Gianforte and Bussy is just one of the many we'll be paying close attention to in just a few days. And of course, there's plenty of national races as well. Back in 2020, there was a lot of debate and confusion as to what's normal and what could be considered fraudulent or cheating. Tonight, we provide a little insight into election vocabulary in an attempt to help voters understand the lingo they'll hear on Election Day. Everything that happens after you cast your ballot is called the canvas. So when the polls close on election day, that's really when the canvassing uh, period begins. And what that means is that you are um, collecting all of the, the legal votes. Some states, like Maryland, allow the canvassing of mail-in ballots to start before election day. Bipartisan teams look for required information, maybe a signature or date, and check to see if the ballot was filled out properly. If the ballot has been filled out in pencil, we are required to cover the pencil marks with pen marks. A ballot with unclear selections or extra markings might require adjudication, where bipartisan teams must agree on the voters' intent. Those same teams will often duplicate the voters' choices to a new ballot, so it can be scanned by the tabulating machines. There are at least three people who are involved when we do that to make sure that we are actually covering what the voter has voted. Reconciliation happens after the counting is done. Officials compare the number of people who voted versus the number of ballots they have to make sure everything matches. Some jurisdictions perform audits, which in many cases are just a spot check of the results. So in North Carolina, two of those precincts um, are randomly selected 
and the counties will go through and they will do a hand to eye recount of maybe one or two contests. But even then, the work might not be over. A recount could be automatically triggered by local laws in a close election, or it could be requested by a candidate. Sometimes you may do a recount using the voting equipment. And so running all the ballots through again. Running all of the ballots back through. In some states, you have to run all the ballots back through a different type of uh, an alternative vote tabulation system okay. than what was originally used. And then comes certification when the results are authenticated. Depending on the race, it could happen at the city or county level. All federal elections are certified by the state. Election experts say the checks and balances built into the canvassing process are why Americans can have faith in the final results. Are you confident that the results of the November election will be true and fair? Absolutely. Across the board, we have to trust the process. Stephanie Liebergen, Scripps News, Washington. On this Friday and the first day of November, fairly pleasant start to the weather month for us and around much of Montana and Wyoming. We have some high clouds moving overhead, but overall tranquil weather for us right now. We'll still have a fairly seasonably chilly night tonight for most locations. Lows drop down to the 20s and lower 30s. We will have, after a mostly Sloaning morning we will have increasing clouds throughout the day on Saturday. There is a slight chance of some mountain snow and valley rain early Sunday, but better chances are coming. Our seven day forecast in a few minutes. Another year of the Montana Millionaire and another record breaking sellout time. Tickets went on sale this morning at 530 and were completely sold out in less than three hours. Last year, the tickets sold out in five hours, but there were only 380,000 of them. This year, that number was up to 500,000 and still they were gone in the blink of an eye. There are some additional prizes this year. There will be four million dollar winners along with one $250,000 winner, plus thousands of chances at 500 and 100 dollar prizes. The 250,000 drawing will take place December 2nd with the grand prize drawing the day after Christmas on the 26th. Some good news regarding the infamous grizzly bear 399. She's been returned to her rightful place near the Pilgrim Creek area of Teton Park. Today, Fish and Wildlife returned her ashes to the area where she spent most of her life, inspiring many visitors to the greater Yellowstone ecosystem with her unbelievable ability to create offspring. 399 was killed after a vehicle hit her about 40 miles south of Grand Teton National Park. At 28 years old, Grizzly 399 contributes significantly to the grizzly bear population, confirmed to have 18 offspring in her long life. She became a prominent figurehead of the park, constantly photographed by many. Now, after a respectful cremation, she's back resting where she became an icon. Election fraud has become a highly discussed topic, especially following the 2020 presidential election. In tonight's Truth Be Told segment, we investigate the claims from former President Donald Trump and his supporters about uh, the voter fraud in a major battleground state. Patrick Terpsta reports. Trump keeping up a drumbeat of claims not supported by evidence about voter fraud in Pennsylvania. We caught them cheating big in Pennsylvania, Trump posted to a social media site, must announce and prosecute now. Earlier, Trump zeroed in on Lancaster County, west of Philadelphia. They've already started cheating in Lancaster, they've cheated. We caught them with 2,600 votes. No, we caught them cold. Here's what actually happened in Lancaster. The county reported receiving a batch of 2,500 suspicious voter registration applications, not votes. Some of the forms were in the names of voters who said they never filled them out. Several hundred, uh, according to the district attorney's office, as late as yesterday, have been determined to be fraudulent. Authorities in Lancaster say the election there remained secure. Trump also tweeted there was really bad stuff happening in York County. Like Lancaster, York County has been analyzing about 3,000 voter registration applications. So far, half of those have been verified as valid. Currently, none of them have been deemed fraudulent. Pennsylvania voting officials say the systems to secure the election are working. There is no evidence of anything indicating any sort of widespread voter fraud. Truth be told, Trump's claims of widespread cheating in Pennsylvania are baseless not supported by evidence. 
And we actually have Patrick with us today to try and clarify some of these details. Uh, Patrick, you asked the Trump campaign for any evidence to back up his claims about the major cheating going on in Pennsylvania. What did you learn? Well, the campaign has responded pointing to the fact that there were some of those voter registration forms that were fraudulent in Pennsylvania. They also talk about an incident in Bucks County that happened earlier in the week where some early voters were turned away after waiting hours at, in line for those polls. Now, the county has said this was all a miscommunication, but the Trump campaign sued and they have been able to extend that early voting option until the end of Friday. But all of these incidents, none of them equate to any any type of voter fraud. Hmm. Yeah, interesting stuff. Well, thanks, Patrick. And of course, we'll have all of your coverage for elections next Tuesday. Stay with us for all real-time election coverage and results across the state and nationally online and on our streaming app. On the MTN app, you'll also find our partners at Scripps News with reporters deployed to big battleground states in the national race for the White House and control of Congress. Results and full coverage will start immediately Tuesday morning. So to come on the MTN 430 News here on Q2, another week closer to the Brawl of the Wild. We'll set the stage for both the Cats and Grizz games this weekend and where you can watch as we approach the end of the season. But first, Jason will be in with the full forecast heading into the weekend. Stay with us. We'll be right back.